Hey everyone, how's it going? Programmer 007 here, and Happy New Year! Welcome to the first reaction video of the year. And it's been a very tough past couple of weeks. We've got Donald Trump and Iran, we've got Australian wildfires, and we've also got COPPA, copper, affecting YouTube videos. But I don't have to worry, because this channel doesn't have monetization, so I can relax. But anyway, to kick this year off, I should be reacting to How the Universe is Way Bigger Than You Think by Real Life Law. Haven't reacted to a Real Life Law video in a while, but anyway, with that being said, if you haven't seen it for yourself, the original link is in the description below. Be sure to subscribe to Real Life Law as well. Also, subscribe to my second channel, Henry Brook. Link for that will be in the description below also. And without further ado, let's get on with the show. This is a Real Life Lore video made possible by Squarespace. Make your next move with a beautiful website from Squarespace. This is Earth. You live here on this planet somewhere, and everything that you've ever known is located right here. But, just how small exactly is Earth when compared to the scale of the entire universe? Let's start by zooming out to where we can see our nearest cosmic neighbor, the Moon. You may think that the Moon is very close to Earth since it dominates our night skies, but in reality the Moon isn't this close to our planet, it's actually about this far away. 384,400 kilometers away from you right now on That's average, a long distance. you could fit 30 entire Earths in between this distance, and if you somehow wow. were able to drive a car at a constant 100 kilometers per hour speed, it would take you about 160 days to drive the entire distance. Wow. Despite this be some road trip. distance, however, 12 humans have actually set foot here, representing the furthest away that any individual... Is that it? Only 12? Only 12 people have been to the moon. humanity's greatest achievements. This is what the Earth would look like from there if you were standing there with them. And wow. if you wanted to communicate with somebody back at home, it would take a message about two and a half seconds to travel between you and them, since that's how fast the speed of light can travel at. This is a photo that was taken on Mars, and that tiny dot that you see there is Earth as seen from the Martian surface. No. On average, Mars that is, is an incredible 225 million kilometers away from Earth, but that distance can be as high as 401 million kilometers. That means that whenever humanity finally gets around to landing a human on the planet, that person will be 986 times further away from Earth than the astronauts who landed on the moon. That'll be such an achievement addition, when the time delay mankind finally lands itself. Mars, on Mars. Back to Earth isn't just two and a half seconds, it's actually more like 20 minutes each direction, which would render instant communication in the event of an emergency impossible. When we zoom out even on further own. away, we can find the Voyager 1 space probe, which is the furthest away man-made object from Earth. It is currently located 138 AUs from the Earth, AU meaning astronomical unit, which is the distance between the Earth and the Sun which means that Voyager 1 is 138 times further away from us than the Sun is. At some point on its long voyage, Voyager 1... I think 1 the Sun is about 93 million miles away from the Earth's surface. It may not look like much at first, but in my opinion, this is the greatest single photograph ever taken in all of human history. This tiny, pale blue dot is Earth, and I don't think that anybody has ever said something as amazing about this as Carl Sagan when he said, if you look at it, you see a dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, That's everyone home. you ever That's heard us. of, every human being who ever lived, lived out their lives. The aggregate of all our joys and sufferings. Thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines. Every hunter and every forager. Every hero and coward. Every creator and destroyer of civilizations. Every king and every peasant. Every young couple in love, every hopeful child, every mother and every father, every inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there, on a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. Voyager 1 is currently traveling at 17 kilometers every single second, but even at that speed, it won't break out of the reach of our solar system for another 30,000 years. Wow. Once we go beyond the solar system, we arrive in our interstellar neighborhood. Here we shift to the light year unit of measurement, which is the distance that light travels in a full Earth year, or about 9.461 trillion kilometers. 
The star Proxima Centauri here is the closest other star to us other than our sun, but it's still 4.24 light years away from us. To put that into perspective, if it was heading in the right direction, it would still take Voyager 1 over 70,000 years to reach it. In other words, if you drove your car at 100 kilometers an hour like in our previous example to the moon, it would take over six times longer than the entire age of the universe is uh. just to finally get there there, and it wouldn't even exist still when you arrived. God. When we zoom out even further, we can see the entire Milky Way galaxy, the Milky inside Way. of which Earth is located right here. This yellow dot is the furthest extent of humanity's radio broadcasts throughout history, which means that any possible aliens who live outside of this range are totally unaware of humanity's presence. It's complete silence outside of this yellow dot as far as we are currently aware, but the entire galaxy spans over 100,000 light years from end to end. There are over 100 billion stars and over 100 billion planets inside of our galaxy. But you have never seen the full glory of the galaxy at night, because 99% of the stars that you can see with the naked eye are limited to this small, tiny region right here. Set up. But even this massive galaxy is nothing compared to the rest of what's out there. Zooming out even further and we arrive at the local group of galaxies, a collection of 54 different galaxies that is about 10 million light years across. Just but gets bigger and bigger. Further and we can see the Virgo supercluster, of which the local group here is just a tiny segment of. There are at least 100 other groups of galaxies just like our own local group inside of here, and the distance from one side to the other is a mind-numbing 110 million light years. <laughs> but even the massive Virgo supercluster is nothing but a quiet and tiny lobe of the just gets bigger and bigger. supercluster. How big is the universe? A structure that is home to our galaxy as well as 100,000 other galaxies. The distance from one side to the other is 520 million light years, but from even there we can zoom out all the way oh to the my God. observable universe and see that even the titanic Laniakea supercluster is just a tiny and insignificant part of everything. Uh. <laughs> this is the observable universe and it contains everything that we know of. It is home to at least two trillion different and individual galaxies, which together God. contain more stars than there are are grains of sand on the entire Earth. The distance from Earth to any side of the observable universe is 46.5 billion light years, which means that the entire width is 93 billion light years across. What's perhaps even more interesting, however, is what actually lies beyond the observable universe. Keep in mind that the observable universe is all we can currently see, and it's entirely possible that the rest of the universe outside of it is vastly larger and more fantastic than we can possibly ever imagine. We simply don't know what else is out there, because the light from these incredibly distant places has not yet had enough time in the universe's history to reach us yet back on Earth. And the light from some places may never reach us at all. Because some parts of space very far away from Earth are expanding away from us faster than the speed like of light, it says very not that to means scale. that the light from these places will never, in an infinite amount of time, reach Earth. Meaning that even if humanity is eternal and exists forever, there will still be an unknown number of places in the universe that we will never know about or ever see. So, it is very likely that as unbelievably enormous as it seems, the observable universe is just a tiny slice of what we can currently see of the entire universe. According to the theory of cosmic inflation that was proposed by Dr. Alan Guth, if it is assumed that cosmic inflation began at 10 to the negative 37th of a second after the Big Bang, and with the assumption that the size of the universe before inflation began was equal to its age times the speed of light, then this would seem to suggest that at the present day, the entire universe is 150 sextillion times larger than the observable universe. That number for reference looks like this, with this many zeros. Oh Let this gosh. number sink in for just a moment. This would be similar to you thinking that the entire observable universe, everything that you could see, was the size of a light bulb, but then realizing that in reality the entire universe is larger than the former planet of Pluto. 
Imagine a light bulb in the center of Pluto, but we inside the light bulb were totally unaware that Pluto existed outside of it, and that's a similar situation to this. We are all so unbelievably small, but you shouldn't worry, because all that means is that there is so much left out there for us to discover together. This video was made possible by... That's so bizarre to think how much of the universe we haven't discovered yet. It's, it's amazing enough that people have been to the moon. Um, the first moon landing was such a long time ago. There have been a lot more moon missions since then. Whenever I think about the sun, I always think... If, for example, on like a hot summer's day it's 30 degrees Celsius outside, and we're on Earth, and we're standing 93 million miles away from the sun. And as you get higher up, it gets much colder. So how far away in space from the sun do you have to be for it to be 30 degrees again? Like, this is if you're up in space. How close to the sun would you have to be for it to be reasonably warm? It's just mind-boggling to think about. <laughs> anyway... Hope you lot enjoyed that as much as I did. Once again, be sure to subscribe. Excuse me. Be sure to subscribe to Real Life Law and my second channel. Both links will be in the description below. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and peace out.